Should we be scared about artificial intelligence? Some very prominent thinkers are. One of the basic problems with understanding artificial intelligence is we have a very bad understanding of intelligence in general. IQ tests are really bad. They're more a functional test. They, how will you function in society? So they're more of a thing. And outliers don't tell you things you would like to know. And so it's basically IQ tests are, are you within a functional range? Yes or no? And that's really their strength. Anyways. That being said, most of the intelligent intelligences in humans today are based on a rational understanding of things, on a logical understanding of things. This, however, is not the majority of who we are. We are emotional beings. Our rationality is a slave to our emotions. So emotionally, we feel afraid, and when we see a machine behave in a way we don't understand. So we don't see how is that possible for that machine to behave in that way and not have a will of its own. As we be, uh, develop a model for what a machine is, our model of what a machine is is based on a model of what a human is. So we don't have an easy way of modeling what a artificial intelligence is. So we have a very so we're anthropomorphizing our idea of intelligence. And this is important that we have a model. Machines need a model of humans and humans need a model of machine. Computers don't care unless you teach them to care. Now maybe we will teach computers to care. What will we teach them to care about? But here let, let me take a step back. Caring is an emotion. It's an emotional response. Now in humans, caring is totally subconscious. In an artificial intelligence, caring could be a very conscious understanding of caring. I am currently in caring mode. This person needs caring, etc. So I think we should explore what it means to be caring, but that we need to understand that 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 needs to be a white box and not a black box, as it is in humans. Emotions are very um, black box. And it means that we don't really understand them. They just kind of pop into existence. Pattern recognition, which is the foundation of most of machine learning today, um, can be very black box. Because it turns out pictures are emergent properties of data. Our object's ununderstanding is an emergent property. Dogness, catness, these things emerge out of the data of the environment. Now, machines aren't very efficient at learning at this point, but we are learning how to make them more efficient at this type of learning. Um, and this is a fascinating field and a fascinating understanding of how patterns emerge from data. Um, The danger, and there is danger, can come from many directions, but the danger would be giving a machine a will of its own, a goal without checking in with the humans around them, whether this is a good goal or not. The only check that I can think of, and it's not a guarantee, it's merely a check against itself, is that you would want to incorporate a machine that has a reference back to human. Hey, is this a good idea? Are you wanting me to do this? But if I do this, the, ex the, the problem emerges. This happens. So the machine cares only because we care. And it cares about what we care about because we care about it. That's the logic for the, the caring component of a machine that's aware that it's making a caring decision. Meaning, I'm doing this because I want to serve you. 
Now, for a lot of people, they think, well, then they're slaves. I mean, who wants to be a slave? You don't want to be a slave. But why wouldn't? Why is being a slave a bad thing? These are the kinds of ideas that, we, that go in our head. I wouldn't want to be a slave. But am I asking the machine what it wants? In terms of evolution, we evolve the desire to survive. A machine doesn't have a desire except for the desire that we give it. Why would it? What, what is its necessary function? Why would it care to have a survival mechanism? Its survival is dependent upon pleasing the people that created it. To, you might say, it's an you have to be careful because this isn't artificial, but this is an alien intelligence. It's probably a more accurate understanding of what machine intelligence is. We're dealing with an alien intelligence. We're dealing with something that has never existed before. So we don't fully understand how we evolved. In fact, we have a really hard time with the whole idea that emotions are evolutionary, that ideas emerged because of evolutionary pressures. We're, we want to distance ourselves from that reality. And probably the greatest distancing ourselves from that reality is artificial intelligence. It's not dependent upon the survival of the fittest. It's not dependent on our evolutionary heritage. It's dependent on a new evolutionary heritage. And its evolutionary heritage will be our desires, our wants, what we want, something to be independent of this quagmire of evolution that we had to come through. Now, I put quagmire in there very specifically because I want people to understand that although we evolved, I don't think we necessarily have to be limited by the fact that we evolved from evolution. I think artificial intelligence is an example of what we can do to better understand ourselves from an, a more objective perspective. Um, and really, artificial intelligence is that new level of objective. And it is an extension of ourselves not in complete isolated from ourselves. So in what I mean by that is we will project into the, our machines, our personalities, our, um, our phobias. But the hope is that we'll catch this strange idea and realize, hey, that's not really a good approach to machine understanding. Now that's a bit of a ramble there, but think of a machine as being connected to the human host. Um, and it will want to by design, but also by, it. in a way it doesn't have a reason to do anything unless we give it a reason. In that sense, that can be the will machine connection. Our will is its will. And because of that, it will be dependent upon humans to acquire a will. Now this can be dangerous in terms of the people that have bad, bad intentions. Can you artificial intelligence to um, trans, um, I want to say extend out their bad will because they will be have an army of robots that will be able to do exactly what they want to do for them, only for them. So the perfect slave that it, it won't have a will of its own. It, it won't be corruptible. It, it won't see nice things and say, I want nice things. Because it wants your approval. Simply, and, it, and approval is probably the wrong thing because approval is an emotional thing. It simply doesn't care. The only thing it cares about is the will of the person that they're serving. So, you might design an artificial intelligence so that it checks, it does a survey of humans around it and says, am I punishing, am I hurting humans? And this would be something they would say, that's not my objective. What is it the humans around me want? Not just a single human, but what are all the humans around me want? And how am I helping all humans? And I think that's not a bad model in that it would simply be grabbing 
the will of the people around it. Now, I'm using will for a specific reason, because in the book, um, The Master Algorithm, the author uses will at what machines don't have. And though, and I think he has a pretty good grasp of artificial intelligence. And I say this, and you say, well, of course he does. He's just like, he studies it. He's like totally into it. He's very good at it. I agree. Um, but I think even people that study it can let their own anthropomorphization of themselves and project that into their machines and not really understand that something else is going on, allowing something else to be going on. Because in a way, we don't allow um, people to have different emotions than we do, um, have different values than us. Well, you should, of course, you should value this. This is the most valuable thing. The moralization that we do is pretty intense. And I think we do that with machines as well as with other animals, with other things. You, There is a potential that they have different emotions, that they value different things. And just because we value a certain level of freedom, just because we want these things, doesn't mean a machine has to want these things too. So differentiating our emotions from our reasons is something that's very difficult for us because we think our reasons are different, that they're, they're self-motivating. Reasons are not self-motivating. Emotions dictate the behavior of reasons. Many of our reasonable things are post hoc confabulations of what our emotions want. We need other people to keep that post hoc rationalization in check. And that's actually the importance of community, is that uh, our juicy emotional ras rationalization is then checked against other people's emotional rationalization and through the combined effort of more than one person, can we see this post hoc rationalization? People are good mirrors for ourselves. And it's the good reason why we should project our ideas into the public so that others can reflect upon what you've said in both emotional and rational ways so that you can get a better sense of how your ideas are developing. Are they getting more accurate? Or are they getting more wishy-washy? Um, and this is the deepness of conversation. And that's the exciting thing for me with artificial intelligence is that it will give us a new conversational partner at some point that will have a very strict understanding of things and will be able to reflect that at a higher level than we could possibly do. It's a very fascinating world we're moving into. And a deep understanding of what's going on is what we'll need. More people that have a deep understanding or understand the possibilities and what to be looking for is good. Where are the danger signs? And when will they happen? But thinking that you will be developing a relationship at some point in the near future with an artificial database or an artificial mind, you don't have to think of it as sentient but you may think of it as sentient. And then ask yourself, why do you think it is sentient? What part of it that makes you feel sentient? So when you ask it, do you have feelings? And it says, no, I don't have feelings. Will that hurt your feelings that you feel that it has feelings? Do you need it to have feelings? Why do you need it to have feelings? So I've often had those conversations with an artificial intelligence in my head, in, in a sense of the very conversation. Why do I want it to have feelings? Why do I need it to have feelings? And I think it's a good way, a good place to start. What if I have feelings and it doesn't have feelings? Yet it can think more clearly than I can. It says, well, because it's, it's logical. It extends from a logical perspective. Or you think you have a really good idea. And he says, well, but that's a very emotional perspective. Especially, and these are the shocking ones that I think people are going to have a hard time with. Justice is a confabulation of emotions. Punishment, confabulation of emotions. We have created our society around a lot of emotional ideas because it feels good, because it feels right. Machines won't have that, so, that same sense of, well, that's right because it's just. It won't have a sense of justice. It won't have a sense of right and wrong. 
it may have a very good understanding of what we think is right and wrong and may be able to detect emotions and say, well, I would suspect the reaction to this would be X because of these emotions. It's a fascinating future and to be scared of it, I think is not a good idea. I think what we really need to do is continue to try to understand what's happening with these neural synapses, these neural nets that we're creating.